I'm Dr. Pete Economo, the East Coast Psychologist. And I'm Dr. Nikki Rubin, the West Coast Psychologist. And this is When East Meets West. I have a lot of thoughts about entitlement that Pete and I have talked about, not on the podcast many a time. And so, you know, we really thought it might be important to, to bring this into to more of a public discussion. Yeah. Well, you know, because I think a lot of us have had experiences with an entitled person. What do you think? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. And and maybe, you know, maybe some of us... Hey, brother, if you're know. listening, I think you're entitled sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, know, we know he's listening now. We know, we know he's been listening to the podcast. So, hello. Hi, how are you doing? Um, yeah. But so entitlement defined, the fact of having a right to something. Yes. And, well, and I was also going to say that some of us might even recognize we felt entitled ourselves. Right. So the belief that one is inherently deserving of privileges or special treatment. Uh huh. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> and and I think and I do think it's important to to say everybody has felt that way sometimes. Uh, it, might yeah. be, it might even be that we we feel in, you know we feel entitled to happiness. We feel entitled to a job. We feel yeah. entitled, you know, to I don't know, not have to deal with traffic. My favorite LA example. Well, and which could be a, a really good motivator for some folks. You know, I think mm-hmm. that that could be a way that they get motivated to try and do and to accomplish. So I, mm-hmm. I, like we always say on this, on, on this podcast, it's not bad per se. No. And there's moments when you present it that it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a couple examples that I'm going to give, Nikki. What do you yes, say? Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, very much looking forward to hear them. Yes. Well, and, but before we even get into the yes. examples, though, I, I think it might be useful to describe a little bit more in detail about what entitlement looks like behaviorally, yeah. right? So, so piggybacking off those definitions, entitlement shows up behaviorally when somebody is focused solely on their own desires, wants, and needs. They're having trouble perspective taking the desires, wants, and needs of other people. So it's a very narrow, uh, lens that someone's mm-hmm. operating uh from within i like and, you brought in okay. the the, beha- the behavioral perspective yes well making. you know so we'll, you know we'll, i like we'll, to we'll do, break yeah. that down for a second yes so and perspective taking is a behavior right it's a covert behavior it's something you're doing inside your body that no one can see you doing but it's a behavior that is required uh in order to basically practice uh empathy right because it's you have to behaviorally put yourself in someone's shoes, imagine what, what their experiences is, what, you know, what their um, thoughts might be or physiological reactions. And when you're acting from a place of entitlement, you're not stepping into someone else's experience. You're only staying connected to what do you want out of that moment? What do you need out of that moment? That's right. Yeah. And so being able to, to see it that way. And actually, so I, I, uh, one of my friends who's a speaker, Shamika Holzclaw, she is mm-hmm. one of the top, you know, female basketball players of all time. She does, uh, you know, no national, big deal, no big deal, <laughs> but just like national circuit for mental health because she's very open yeah. about her challenges with the mental health. And so one of the things she says about say entitlement or like in particular millennials or tend to be identified as such, she really reframed it from a different perspective mm. where she said millennium millennials, uh, but, but they're agents of change. So that, you know, their me, me, me generation really creates change because they get things done. So again, mm-hmm. another sort of strength-based perspective around how, yeah. how maybe entitlement can work favorably for some groups or for some generation. Well, I think I, I like that example because I think what that highlights is that, so there's a generalization, a bias, a stereotype yes. about millennials that, they're, that there's an entitlement in that generation. And what she was really saying is like, well if we non-judgmentally look at that behavior of focusing on, on, on oneself, there are adaptive aspects to that. What becomes problematic is when you're not including the perspective of others. So it's this balance, this dialectic, both, you know, making space for both things. So, you know, like with anything, where do we get sticky and stuck? It's when we're only looking at one lens and, and, you know, and, and, and I would say in, that's the definition of entitlement itself is that it's just one lens. If you're, if you're focusing on getting things done and also recognizing other people have needs, wants, and desires, right. you're not acting from an entitled place. You're that's actually right. being more flexible and holistic. 
And so I'm going to, my flexibility yes. is that I'm an elder millennial. So just going to put that out there. <laughs> which, which can I just, let me just say, I always, I always, I still get angry that we're called that because I'm like, we used to be called generation Y for yes. a very small, there's like a, like a five year period. That well, there's I, still references Gen Y and Gen Next, but uh, in particular, we're millennials, yeah, so uh, but fine. elder millennials, you and I. And yes, I'm elder kind of millennials. On the, I'm on, I'm way You're more You're on the cusp real cusp. You're I'm on the on real. The actual cusp. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that, you know, the perspective taking is key. And I think that, you know, like you said, it's an overt behavior. Um, I, I, you know, I think sometimes like, so for one way I feel entitlement at times is like in my role, many roles um, of power and privilege, mm -hmm, I'm able mm -hmm. to walk onto fields or mm -hmm. I'm able to like be in a locker room, you know, or walk behind a, a large stadium. Mm -hmm. Or park in a place where others can't park, and, yep. and those—that's entitlement. And, Absolutely. And, yeah. Well, it's like it's it's the, the I deserve this. Yeah. Right. I deserve this. And yeah. Because I, I I totally walk in as if I deserve. I'm like, <laughs> ch ch my chest first enters. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. I, and I'm thinking of like silly examples of like when I you know, back in my youth, you know, uh, when it's like, I'm entitled to like get into this club, this club or something cool. like that, you know, yeah. and it's what like, was the I'm club gonna, you went to. <laughs> I was not a club person in general, but I'm thinking of like going to someone's bachelorette in oh. Vegas and we were like, I'm going to cut the line. And I, you know, so I'm fancy. Like, yeah. You know. We had hunk of bunker. Oh. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> nice. name. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, I mean, obviously we had, you know, the college spots, but sure. uh, which I, you know, my, my college friends are chuckling thinking of those right now, <laughs> but, but I want to get into those examples you were talking about of when you've experienced some, some, you know, the, the, the problems with entitlement when that's, when you, well, you know, notice that. Yeah. Now. Well, and I, I it, it is, it's when it creates this idea that it's expected. So in particular within academia, there is, especially with like sort of the Gen Z, um, this idea of like everyone gets an A. And I think that mm -hmm. any educator will kind of respond to that because we know that there, this, we have the normal curve, right? So there's mm -hmm. the normal curve, which by the way, is also biased. It does, you know, yep. so, so linking to our previous episodes around sort of inequity, um, mm -hmm. thinking about this normal curve that was created also by white, you know, researchers. But the idea is that in general, people fall in these average sort of zones. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, but this shift within academia has occurred where it's like a standard deviation to the right now. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, so it's all shifted because it's almost like, a B has become average, mm. where historically a C was average. Uh, so there's like, I'm entitled, I'm entitled to, to an, an A. a. Mm -hmm. Like I show up, I submit my things. I, that's an A, isn't it? It was like, well, no, A is superior. So I make a point to at least like first class, like identify what grades mean. Yes. And then I want them just to self-reflect. I might end up giving you the A if you earn mm -hmm. it, but I want you mm -hmm. to self-reflect of, are you superior? Because I think everyone can relate with that term. And that's the psychological term we use in, in mm -hmm. you know, in, in assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that, uh, what is it? Superior, superior high average, range. average mm -hmm. low average, mm -hmm. yeah, borderline. So those are, you know, categories that I think, um, so, so that's where I probably see, that's where I experience it the most. That's for sure. As you're talking, I'm also thinking about sort of clinical examples when, and, and it's not just, actually I should reframe that. It would actually be, um, within the confines of a private practice business. Cause I think other people can mm -hmm. have experienced this out that are not psychologists is when I, uh, I have, patients that maybe, for example, don't want to pay my cancellation fee that yeah. they want, they want us, they want us, they want a special treatment, right? right. I have a 24 hour cancellation policy right. that's required. Like that's, most, like, like everybody, most, like has. everybody yeah. has. And, and I think this, this is important to say, and we haven't said this yet. Entitlement includes this idea that the rules don't apply to me. That's great. Yeah. Right. Very that good. the rules don't apply. And it's like, even, it's so interesting as I'm saying that I feel myself getting activated. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. That, and I think that is what is activating for a lot of people. Yeah. It's that, and, and that's what, that's what's activating about. Like if we get really big about this, about white privilege, it's like the rules don't apply to me. That's I right. should be able to get away with it. I should yeah. get an A. I should get the best parking spot. Yeah. I shouldn't have to pay Dr. Rubin's fee because yeah. I'm special. I'm different. And, and that and, sounds, Nikki, that sounds a bit like episode 10. We talked about righteousness and rigidity. So that yeah. sounds a little bit like that. What do you think? Yeah, there's, there's definitely overlap there yeah. that yeah. I'm right. My yeah. way is better. And, and again, it's the entitlement piece is this adding that, again, that I'm special in some way, that I, I'm deserving of treatment that is outside of, of the boundaries that are being presented to me. And that's, yeah. you know, and I think at least for me, that I've ex I experienced that as very disrespectful. 
Oh yeah. Well, it is disrespectful. And another place where another example I'll give you is athletes. And so mm-hmm. I think in general, athletes um, have a sense of entitlement. Frankly, I think it's justified. So I'll, mm-hmm. I'll speak again with say with student athletes because uh, as an as an academic, uh, and I sit at faculty meetings. Yes. Uh, um, nine times out of ten, student athletes are shit talked. You know, it's like you know mm-hmm. that there's they get too many resources mm-hmm. or you know so other faculty that are like really scholarly don't fully understand what athletes bring. And mm-hmm. then interesting sort of thing there is like I think um, I forget that I think it's like eighty or ninety percent of like the revenue brought to the NCAA is from black athletes. Oh, right. Because wow. if, if you think of the inequity of like, the, yes, you know, the, the really gen, like revenue generating sports, um, predominantly football and then basketball, mm-hmm. you know, uh, within the in NCAA, you see that uh, the athletes are predominantly black. So that's a sort of interesting thing, too. So you have these black athletes making the majority of the money for mm-hmm. the institutions. Mm-hmm. And yet the faculty whose salary are paid by them mm-hmm. don't see the value in, in that. Yeah. Well, no, no. I was gonna say. I, I think that's important. You're bringing that in, and I think this is maybe what could potentially get confusing for people is that. Well, where are we trying to make things more equal, right? right. Where are you trying to balance things out, and then where is behavior entitled? Because I think in the entitled piece, it's really important to just keep reiterating here that it's believing that. They said there's no consequences for you, that you, the, the rules, rules, are for somebody else. rules are for somebody else. And, yeah. and that, that is, that is problematic because you're not, you're not considering somebody else's experience, right? That's what I'm saying. It's, there's a lack of perspective taking involved. And I think what you're talking about is m- more on the level of that actually sort of, you know, being aware of, of student athletes potentially um, getting some. Uh, allowances or perks or whatever they are, that that is balancing things out, that there's a larger inequity present. Right. And so, and so they're perceived as being entitled. When in reality, they're it's not. Justified, yeah, it's my justified. Opinion. So I guess yes. I, I, yeah, I, I led in with my opinion rather than talking about the, the you know, the, the actual right. entitlement. <laughs> but the entitlement is that, you know, maybe they're, but th- this is the thing. I can go to late, I, I can go late to class by a minute or two and it's no issue. But if one of these other athletes that on a high revenue generating sport goes, it's, they're targeted. They're you know, targeted. It's seen more, you know, because frankly, what I see is the professors are really into them. They're like excited that this person mm. is in their class. So it's a really, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's complicated, but, a, you know, I'm bringing that in because I do think in general, student athletes are seen as entitled where they'll, you know, they'll think like, you know, that they could be late to class or that they can hand in an assignment late or they have academic advising and all these resources. Well, and, and maybe, and maybe some of those things are entitled behaviors. So That's like right. handing in an assignment late other students might be, feel, I think, right. justifiably so that that's that's not fair, right? That's right? That that's the rules don't apply. Though I think, you know, again, you're speaking to sort of a, a broader uh, inequity in that system, and 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 also trying to recognize that maybe some of these, some of the the per, like I said, allowances or perks are trying to balance some of that. That's right. Are you going to give an example of entitlement? Of entitlement, I mean, I have so. I mean, I, I mean, you gave it like cancellation fee. I like that one. Th- that one, I mean, that that's I that I think about that a lot. I mean, I also think just like out in the world when somebody, it's a very silly one. Yeah. You said, but it's like when someone cuts in line. Yeah. You know, you're waiting in line and someone just cuts in line and starts ordering something that irks me. So to let no me end. give you the best Eastern perspective. Okay, on that. please. So yeah. when I was in New York, I got to see the Dalai Lama maybe like five or 10 years ago. He spoke at Rockefeller mm-hmm. Center and it was such a cool experience. So I think amazing. I twice. And all of his monks waited at the back of the line. And it was such an interesting thing because they let wow. everyone else go in first. Wow. Whereas, you know, you know that the majority of the world is like, let me get in there so I get Absolutely. to my seat. Well, spe- especially, especially in New York. Especially in New York, yeah. <laughs> Don't hate on the East Coast. <laughs> I'm not, not hating more. More again, just like. You used to like the, it. I did. <laughs> just kidding. No, yeah, I, did. I mean, I did. It, no, and more, I more mean that not that I, actually, it's not, I don't mean to imply that that New Yorkers are entitled. It's It's more sort of a behavioral energy around you know, you got to move forward and get things done. And there's like, you know, why, why wait sort of more in the, the energy of moving things forward and impatience. I, I don't actually think it, it's a, it means that they're, they're thinking the rules don't apply to them right. though. Uh, that is very, that's very interesting. That yeah. It was a really cool that. experience to see, because again, I think that would be a, a common example. You know, I think sometimes when I'm on retreats with my teacher, like there's a little sense of entitlement because I'm with him a lot. And, mm. you know, um, I think, uh, I, I, I recently had that experience because sometimes pools are not 
open. And so mm. my mind, I would, but so I did it with awareness where I was like, I, I, I mindfully know that I could get access to at least two or three different indoor pools with yeah. my entitlement. Yeah. Right. Be- yep. um, and I'm going to download the app and try and schedule like everybody else does. Well, well, so I think, so I want to be really careful with the language here. So I don't think that's, I don't think that's your entitlement. I think when you're saying by bringing in the awareness, well, yeah, it's not entitled, like you're recognizing yeah. that you can have access, right? right. And, and, and like you said at the beginning of this episode, it's not good or bad. We're, Pete and I aren't saying that you're never, never allowed to take advantage of, I'm going to keep using this word perk right? Yeah. It's not that you're never allowed. Everybody has taken advantage of some perk. Everybody. You know, everybody has. And that's because it's easier. It feels nice to feel special. Right. You know, it makes things go more quickly. You know, if you, you know, if you can get into that club because you know the bouncer, you're probably going to take that perk, you know? Well, you know I was New York's hottest bartender at one point, right? <laughs> I do. I wasn't, I wasn't sure if you wanted to share that, so I was... <laughs> Well, that was when I when I worked at the at a, Marquee. A Marquee. Yeah, Marquee. That, yeah, which is still around, actually. Like twenty some years later. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, there was certain access and entitlement that came with that, where you could go and and if you you know you, you knowing people that worked and owned those places allowed yeah, you. So, to, yeah. So there was access. So I know you say so you get like access and entitlement. Well, there there could be entitlement though. I would say so is access that you're taking advantage of person. Well, I was a different person that I was yeah, okay. kidding, like I. So maybe <laughs> that maybe, was entitlement. Maybe, maybe there was entitlement too. <laughs> it was. But, but remember, I'm owning. Okay, I'm owning yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. So yeah. But remember, entitlement again is is believing that you deserve that. The rules yeah. don't apply to you. That others don't matter. And so when you're talking about getting access to a pool, it's like, yeah. okay, you're mindfully aware that like you're taking advantage of a perk that you have while also recognize or that you could and also recognizing that other people don't have that. Mm-hmm. So that's what I would want listeners to be curious about for themselves and also be mindful of not judging taking advantage of a perk as, oh, I'm entitled. I shouldn't do that. Cause I could see that happening to the flip side, you know, especially. Yeah, but I would kind of err. I would rather that happen than the other. <laughs> I mean, ag- ag- I agree with that. I, I agree put that, that out there. I totally agree with that. And I just, I, I can, you know, I just reflecting on some conversations I've had with patients where I think people can also get very attached and sticky about being a good person and doing the right thing. And, yeah. and, you know, we're human beings. We, we don't, we don't actually act in line with our values or act optimally at all times. And that doesn't somehow make you entitled, right? It's not because you've taken advantage of perks. It's what I want folks to be aware of is, is when are you taking advantage of perks and believing a story that I keep saying the rules don't apply to you, that you just, you shouldn't have to pay the late fee. You shouldn't have to wait in line. You know, you, uh, you know, you shouldn't have to, I don't know, I keep pay whatever it is, pay the full fee, do the homework assignment, whatever it is. It's that coming back to this equality here of like the rules are supposed to apply to all of us and how can we best act in line with that? I mean, would you add anything? to that or no i mean i think like so we're, we're bringing the awareness to it uh i think recognizing that we all I, maybe we all because i also f- keep thinking that you and i have had way more perks and privileges than say some other folks so there's definitely some who, right. probably, is, who probably wouldn't have had right. that yeah so that's why i think for me and, and again for me it's the zen stuff of just like non-attachment to materials um so that really entitlement means nothing you know so or even access means nothing because mm-hmm. the bottom line is like i'm just you know trying to get in touch with the core sense of myself, my being. Right, of course. And that's a yes. really challenging thing to do. It is a really, really challenging thing to do. And I think in, in wrapping up here, what we can leave listeners with is just to be really curious and mindful of the experiences of other people. Even if you want something, even if you believe that you deserve something, can you also just slow down and recognize that, you know, other people have desires, wants, and needs too. This has been When East Meets West. I'm Dr. Nikki Rubin. And I'm Dr. Pete Economo. Be present, be brave. This has been When East Meets West. All material is based on opinion and educational training of Drs. Pete Economo and Nikki Rubin. Content is for informational and educational purposes only.